Hi, good news everyone. My name is Mr. Chilver and I'm going to talk you through the Cambridge Nationals Level 2 Creative Eye Media. I'm going to start today with RO82 Creative Digital Graphics. It's the mandatory unit of the Cambridge Nationals and therefore very important to your course. But we can't complete the official OCR assignment at home. The exam board rules state that all coursework must be completed under teacher supervision in a classroom environment. So in order to get ourselves started and so we don't miss out on the learning, what I'm going to be doing today is talking you through a new assignment that I've personally created, setting you some tasks and asking you to submit those instead. It's going to teach us the same skills that we would normally have with our actual coursework, but of course by using a different assignment this allows us to give a little bit more feedback and guidance so that you can be successful without uh, losing your time. So today, lesson one, we've got some learning objectives and by the end of this video you should understand what the scenario is, be able to interpret your client brief and explain who your target audience is. Now the scenario and client brief is here. As you can see it is not an official OCR assignment. You will not be able to submit this work as your coursework. It will be completely irrelevant to the actual assignment but the skills that you'll learn, the processes, the uh, tuition I'm going to give you on photo editing will help you to be successful when it comes to submit your own project. The scenario itself is to produce a cover for a Blu-ray uh, disc. This disc is called Daring to Dream, England's Story at the World Cup and it's a DVD, I'm sorry, a Blu-ray all about the England women's football team in the recent World Cup. Our goal is to make something like this. Now I made this earlier on Adobe Photoshop. Um, if you have access to this software, brilliant, fantastic. Your school may have given you access or you may have personal access. Um, but if you don't have the ability to use this, what I am going to be doing is showing you not just how to create this in Photoshop, but also in other pieces of software that you may have access to. The GNU Image Manipulation Program, or GIMP, is a free to use, free to download image manipulation tool. Uh, and you can create something very similar if you don't have a laptop or PC that's powerful enough to run either of these two pieces of software, I'm also going to show you how to create it in Pixel and Photopea. These are two browser-based uh, solutions. You'll see the websites up here as well, and I'll talk through with that at the time. Now, because they're browser-based, all you need is an internet connection. Any device that can connect to the internet should be able to run these. Um, you'll be able to make the same sort of edits that I've created in these two bits of software to produce something that looks very, very similar here. Uh, so there should be no reason why you can't do this. In this project, I wouldn't be using PowerPoint or Paint to create the graphics. That's mainly because so many of the higher marks, Mark Band Free, are for using tools and techniques that would be considered complex. Now, those uh, pieces of software such as PowerPoint and Paint, they don't really have access to it. Although you could create something that conceivably might make the Mark Bands 1, uh, you're never going to get those higher grades, so I'm not going to cover those in detail. That said, if you're working from home and those are all you have access to and you don't have a stable enough internet connection to use these browser-based ones, then you can still use the same skills, but know that you should use actual photo editing software in the real project. So, our scenario. Very simply, this Blu-ray cover should have a title and it should be about the England women's football team. The film is expected to be given a certificate U rating and the Blu-ray cover must be produced as a single piece of digiographic artwork, including the front, back and spine. So it is important to make sure that we are talking about a digiographic and a front cover, back cover and a spine. I've set the measurements for you. These are a standard size for a Blu-ray, although there is room for change on some of them, but roughly speaking a Blu-ray is 126mm for the front and back covers wide, 14mm for the spine, and 148mm high. They are slightly shorter than a DVD or a PlayStation Xbox cover, and that's because uh, Blu-ray covers tend to have a small blue band of plastic at the top to help supermarkets etc uh, know that it's a Blu-ray, not a DVD. So it is a different size you will produce a high quality file for print purposes and a low resolution one for use on the website. 
Uh, don't worry about that too much. The way we're going to create that low resolution is by making the high quality one and then lowering the quality and size so that it is smaller for later on. Now you, for the web version, can either make it the entire front or back cover or just a front cover on its own. It doesn't matter so long as it's 500 pixels high. The target audience for the Blu-ray will be quite broad, uh, but you can select a more specific target audience in your planning and explain why the content will appeal to them. And that's a key point today. It doesn't matter what audience you choose. There is no wrong answers. If you want to say it's for people who really, really like women's football, well, that's great. That's fantastic. It's a perfectly appropriate target audience. Maybe this Blu-ray is for people who have never seen women's football before and it's going to be targeting a brand new group of people to, see, to show them how great the sport is. Well, that's also perfectly appropriate. You might be aiming it at football fans or non-football fans or people who've never heard of football. You may be aiming it at younger viewers or older viewers, male or female. You may be aiming it at schools to demonstrate skills and techniques. The choice is completely up to you and we'll go through some ideas, but know full well that there is no wrong answer as long as you justify your reasons. So every assignment usually starts with LO1, task one. I'm going to be skipping that today. Um, that's only because LO1 is a research task. And if you want to, you can read this document at your own time that explains why I'm not covering it. Boils down because it's a research task. If I were to do this research for you, then I would be probably giving you most of the answers for your actual coursework. And I don't want you to suffer from malpractice if an example watches this video. The easiest way to avoid malpractice is to make sure that whenever we do our research, we talk about uh, what we find in context. Remember, you are not being asked to make this because you're a student. The exam board states that you're an employee of a company who has been commissioned to make this. Someone has paid you to make this. Now, that person does not need you to tell me the history of what a JPEG is, when was it invented, who by, what can it do. The person who's paid money for this product doesn't care. The person who's paid money for this project wants to know why it's a JPEG. Why have you chosen JPEG and not a PNG or a GIF or a PDF file? There are very important reasons and you're not going to find them on Wikipedia. In fact, Wikipedia is very much a frenemy in this task. It offers all this information, it offers all this help created by experts for the most part, but nobody cares. And it's important that we really, really state that. Unless you can put it in context and explain how it affects your product and your project, well, you probably should leave it out. I'm going to create another video completely separate to this one, just talking about LO1 to give you some more advice. That's the marks for it. Task two is where we start today. We're going to start planning our digital graphic, and in this video, we're going to cover this first section here. We're going to consider the client requirements, how they're specified. We're going to consider the target audience for the digital graphic, and decide on a visual style and composition. It's important that we work on those things there. The first one, the client requirements, are very, very specific and have been highlighted to you, which they will be in, by the exam board in your real assignment as well. The target audience, however, is completely up to you. Okay. When you decide on the visual style, well, that's going to differ depending on who your target audience is. Let's take an example. Let's interpret the client brief. When we're looking at the client brief, we need to read and take out the key points that have been added for us. So here's that scenario again. There are certain things here which we have been asked to create. So let's make sure that we get them first. So we need to make sure that we are creating a Blu-ray cover. It seems simple, but it is definitely one of the key things that's been added to this, okay? We need to make sure that it has a particular title. That is a client requirement there. 
it's been stated to us that it needs to have that. So we must include it. It must be about the England women's football team and perhaps the World Cup. I might even go as far as to highlight journey. So I'm going to talk about that in terms of the graphics later on. What we're not doing is we're not celebrating any losses and all of this sort of stuff here. It's very much we're going to talk about the personal story. And when I think of journey there, I'm immediately my head's going into thinking about well, the players, perhaps. The film is expected to be given a certificate U. Massive requirement there. Also a legal consideration that we're going to talk about later. It must be a single piece of artwork that includes the front, back and spine. We've also been given specific dimensions of the width and the height. These are specified to us, which means we can't ignore them. Okay, We must have a high quality file and a low resolution file for use on the website. Okay, the website version can be the entire front or back or just a back cover, but it must be 500 pixels high. Okay, whichever approach you take. Target audience is going to be quite broad, not specified. But all the things I've now highlighted on the screen are client requirements. There's quite a few, and it's important to see if we can try and break down some of those and, and get them into the right spaces. So if I head back onto that first page there, the first thing that I would do in this coursework is I would probably start with bullet points. I'll be taking off the first few things that I see on a Word document or whatever file that you wish to use for this project. Um, I would start saying, okay, well, it needs to be a Blu-ray cover. And then I might even put front, back, and the spine. I'm going to get, say that it's got a title. And I'm going to go and make another bullet point. It's going to have a title. And I would specify what that title is. Daring to dream. Dot, 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 dot. I would then take a look at my next task there. It's about the England women's football team. Okay, that's great. Um, I'm going to go and put that over here. And I say it's going to be about the England women's football team. And you get the idea of what I'm doing here now. This is the start of where the coursework begins. I can start now to break these down. Now, what I'm not going to do is submit a series of bullet points for my coursework. That's not going to show full understanding, especially because all I've written is, is simply what's on the page. So in order to interpret the client brief, the thing that I'm going to need to do from these is start to put on my initial ideas. So looking at that, I'm going to start to, to write much more in detail about what these sorts of things mean. So from here I could, well, it's a Blu-ray cover. Well, this means it's going to be advertised in a shop. So it must be something that's going to be advertised in a shop. Well, what does that mean then? Well, it means that it's going to need to stand out because the shop is going to want to sell it. Okay. By the fact it's going into the retail market and it's people are going to buy it. Well, that specifies to me that there's probably going to be marks awarded here of having a high quality graphic. If it looked blurry or pixelated, um, basically you're not going to, to, to sell much of it because it will look rubbish. I would specify that in, in client brief. I'm going, to, they've not said we don't want a rubbish graphic, but interpreting what they've written there, I'm going to suggest that that's exactly what they want you to to understand. It can't be a rubbish graphic. What else have I got there? I've got a title, Daring to Dream. Well, not only do I actually need to include that title, but there's a lot that I can interpret from that title. The way that those words are used, the imagery that I might have in my head right now, where I think of Daring to Dream, um, I can interpret what does that mean? What does the film look like. Now this is a fake film. 
but the coursework you're going to do for OCR is also for fake bands and for fake different subjects. But it doesn't mean that we can't specify in our head what that sort of thing does. If I think of a football film that's called Daring to Dream, well, I've got all sorts of ideas about what that might look like. In my head right now, even though I've already completed the coursework, but one of the things that I thought of was having an England player going, yes, victory, congratulations, yeah, we're brilliant, we've done it. They've dared to dream to be the very best that they could, and they've achieved it. Um, I have also thought about, in terms of films, like having a montage of greatest clips of all their successes, and that might be something that I might include on the back cover of my DVD. Okay, it's about England's journey in the World Cup. So interpreting that, well, what does the World Cup even mean? Well, if you don't already know it, it's football. So I want it to be very clear from that brief that this is about football. How am I going to do that? Well, that might be by having images of the sport. It could be about having images of the, the logos of that particular World Cup or the trophy, perhaps or something there that states this is World Cup. Now that's just for the first few points there for that section, and there are much, much more on there. So I'd like you to think through your own time about what you could do to, to explain those extra other bits, okay? Now, it's not our only thing that we need to complete today. The second part of my video is to talk about the target audience, and this, is easy, the easiest part of the project, because there is no wrong answer. It is up to you to specify what that target audience is, but as long as you justify it, you're perfectly fine. This would be a great time to potentially include some of the learning that you have done from R081, the exam unit. There are always some marks available in the spec, drawing relevant skills and knowledge from other units in this spec. So when it's talking about other units, it's not talking about that all of a sudden we're gonna make a video or a sound file. It's talking about RO81. And in RO81, we had to make mind maps, mood boards, storyboards, visualizations, and scripts. Those are the five design tools that are used in every project. Now, later on in this project, we're already going to need to create a visualization. So, I've already ticked one. But that still leaves me with four others. Of these ones here, potentially scripts and storyboards aren't going to help me right now with this task. I can't really write a script that will help me decide a target audience. It doesn't make much sense. It would be a poor use of it, but you're welcome to do so. Either of these two here could work, but I would probably say that this one feels like it would work well for me. And a nice mind map here where I've got my target audience all listed up. And I could then break that down into some of the different potential target audiences that I could have, such as football fans. And this might be broken down even more, perhaps into fans of the men's game, fans of the women's game. Now, those are two potentially same, but potentially different audiences. And for each one of these, they may want different things. So these people here might already know the big stars. They may already have some idea. Perhaps there are new to They're new to the international football game. And maybe they already support their local women's football team and go to matches, but maybe they're new to international football and the World Cup. Perhaps people who are fans of the men's game are 
new to women's players. Maybe these people here have no idea who any of the England f football fan, uh, football stars are. Maybe they've never heard the names or never seen their faces. And so this is a really important point. This audience here and this audience here are very, very different. Okay, this one here would expect to see the greatest England women's football sp uh, stars on the cover. This one, they wouldn't know. So this one here, perhaps maybe we want to see more images of the maybe the whole squad. Whereas this one for one player, if that doesn't make much sense, think about it this way. If you are a football fan and I wanted to make a DVD cover for Manchester United or City or Arsenal or Chelsea or anyone else, Liverpool. If I wanted to have that as the front, I might choose a star striker, the multi-million pound summer signing. And for a Liverpool fan or an Arsenal fan or a Man United fan, that might stand out. And they go, yes, definitely, I'm going to watch that because it's got that person on it. But for someone who doesn't watch football, I mean, it doesn't mean anything to them. Perhaps an image of the club logo or the crest or the name in letters would make more sense. But we're starting to think more about what this might look like here. So what else have we got? Well, other target audiences that we could have here would be obviously the non-fans, people who've never watched football before. It could be for uh, young viewers. For instance, ones who might be watching it in schools or in various youth clubs. I could have potentially a target audience of actually this DVD is to try and promote the game in some way. So maybe it's a, a promotion. So maybe it's going to then go and be used by another company to promote it. Perhaps I'm looking at people who buy a particular newspaper, they're going to get this DVD for free. It's a potential target audience where I can start thinking about what those sorts of people would want. And some of this will link up with other things that we've already talked about. Ticking off your target audience like this, once I've created my uh, mind map, which is going to be a very rough looking document, I will once again write this up in full. In my Word document, decide who my target audience is and ooh, how I'm going to appeal to them. What do they want to see? I would like you as your first task for this project to complete an interpretation of the client brief and look at your target audience. And I'd like that completed and submitted via whatever way your teacher would normally ask you to do so. For my students, we're going to be completing this and submitting it on Share My Homework. Thank you very much. Goodbye.